I'm sorry and all that, but you can't expect me to push stuff your way when I've got staff blokes sitting idle. You seem to like my stuff. Oh, we did, Raymond. You're as good a reporter as the cowboy, but our job is news, right? Leave the imaginative stuff alone. So that's it. No imagination. <laughs> I might have known. Well, Mr. Hewson, there's nothing new in your request. Huh? No, we hear it from different people about three times a week. Mostly young chaps who've taken on a bet. I see. Well, naturally, we always refuse. An internationally known waxworks exhibition like this has nothing to gain and everything to lose by letting people spend the night in our murderous den. Yes, of course. If I allowed it and some young idiot went off his rocker, where would I be? However, your being a journalist does alter the case. Oh, um... What is your paper, Mr. Hewson? Uh, I'm uh, freelancing at present, but uh, I was with the Globe. The Globe? Mm. Ah. And um, how would you propose to treat it? Oh, uh, as an imaginative piece. I I'm trying to get away more and more from just news, you see. Mm, I, I admire a bit of imaginative writing. All the news reads as though it's written by the same chap. <laughs> exactly. I think there's a first-rate story here. Gruesome, but with just a saving touch of humour. Very well, Mr. Hewson. You've talked me into it. Nice bit of publicity. Thank you. All the same, it's only fair to warn you that it's no small ordeal you're undertaking. I don't mind telling you I shouldn't care to take it on myself. But why? I don't know. It's just that they seem to stare at one. If you're susceptible to atmosphere, you're in for a very uncomfortable night. Oh. Now, this could be an important story for me. Very well. Wilkins, we close yet? Good. Um, no need to drape the figures in murderer's den. And you might get an armchair down. A reporter's going to spend the night there. It's very good of you. Oh, not at all. Uh, oh, one condition I'm afraid I must impose. Oh, yes? I must ask you not to smoke. We had a fire scare down there this afternoon. Only a false alarm, though. Now, if you'll come with me... I'll introduce you to your companions for the night. There's Thurtle, murdered Weir near Elstree in 18-something. Ah, yes. J.G. Smith, rides in the bath. Uh-huh. Crippin, insignificant little chap, isn't he? Looked as if he couldn't hurt a worm. Maybe he didn't. Well, who knows. Richard, Palmer. The doctors. That's right. <laughs> They're a dull-looking lot on the whole, don't you think? I sometimes wonder if they weren't labelled what they'd be taken for. Yeah. There's an exception, though. Charlie Peace? Mm. Yes. Uncompromisingly evil. And, of course, this... Who's that? Oh, oh, yes, yes, that's our star turn. The only one of the bunch that hasn't been executed. Well, it's a mild enough face, but completely repellent. Know who he is? I don't think so. That's Dr. Bourdet. Poor death. I can't place the connection. That man was the terror of Paris. He healed people by day and cut throats by night. When the fit was on him, he killed for the sheer devilish pleasure it gave him, and always in the same way, with a razor. After his last crime, he left a clue which set the police on his track. Did you say he got away with it? Oh, he was too clever for them. He disappeared. The police of every civilised country have been looking for him ever since. There's no doubt he managed to do away with himself... But his body was never found. Really? Hmm? There have been one or two similar crimes since, but the experts say that they were done by imitators. Look at those eyes. Yes. The figure's a masterpiece. Don't you find that the eyes bite into you? They do. That's excellent realism for you. They say that Burdett used to mesmerise his victims before doing them in. There were never any signs of a struggle. I'd almost swear I saw him move. <laughs> yes. That's this dim lighting, very cunningly arranged. Oh, I expect you'll have more than one optical illusion before the night's out, Mr. Hewson. You know, if you'd rather call it off... No, 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 no. This story means a lot to me. Well, you won't be locked in, of course. You can always get back upstairs if you think you've had enough. Oh, um, don't worry if you hear someone moving about. There are watchmen on the premises. Oh, well, that's a relief. Oh, hello, Wilkins. Oh. Uh, this is Mr. Hewson, who's going to spend the night down here. Evening, sir. Rather you than me. You got the chair for him? Uh, here we are, sir. Where will you have it, sir? Just here, so as you can have a little chat with Crippen when you're tired of sitting still? Oh, 
Oh, now then, don't you scare him off. I'll uh, place it myself, thanks. Just as long as I've got my back to old Bordet there. I couldn't sit and look him in the eyes, I'll admit that. Give me a yell if you want me, sir. I'll be upstairs. Thanks. Well, I must be getting off too. Uh, when shall we be seeing your article? Oh, uh, later in the week. Splendid. Good night, Mr. Hewson. Good night. No smoking. Go upstairs and have one later. Yeah. See what they mean about this place? Should have brought a book. No. Got to concentrate on it. Do a piece that'll make them sit up. No, nah, no. Nah. Concentrate. Intro. I spent last night in the murderer's den at Mariner's Waxworks. No. Flat. I spent last night in the company of some of the most evil men and women who ever lived. I say lived because... Oh, hell. Oh, I'll think of something. Something will come. If I turn round and look at that poor dead, I'm a coward. Why? Don't expect to find his move. A waxwork that moved might be an angle in that. Uh, corny. If I don't turn round and look at him, I'm a coward. I'm sitting here with my back to him, so as not to look at him. Why? It's only a waxwork. They're all waxworks. I can look at Crippin, all right. I can look at Bordet. Those eyes. Make a note of that. Deathly silent and unearthly stillness of figures like, like bottom of sea. Figures, figures seem to move when not being watched. Now then, Crippin, just because you think my back's turned, I could smash you to pieces, you know, then where'd you be? Watch it, Wainwright. And all the rest of you. Oh. <laughs> oh. They say I've got no imagination. You move, Bordet. Damn you, you move. Good evening. No imagination. Oh, don't get up. Keep still, Bordet. Until I overheard the conversation between you and the manager, I never thought I should have a companion for the night. Get away. Uh, Something get a tells me you're nervous. Oh, don't delude yourself. I'm not one of the waxworks come to life. My name's Burdet. Dr. Burdet. What kind of a joke is this? But I am a bit stiff. I had better explain. Circumstances have made it necessary for me to live in England for a while. I was passing this building this evening when I noticed a policeman looking at me rather curiously. So I joined the crowd and came in. When I got down here, I had an inspiration for a certain means of escape. This is a put-up job. The manager was... Oh, no. You see, all I had to do was raise a cry of fire. The fools all rushed back upstairs. I simply stripped the coat and hat off my own effigy, put them on, 
and pushed the silly waxwork onto the platform. By the time the staff got down here, I was standing in its place. <laughs> Rather clever, wasn't it? This is all lies. This is all lies. It's very tiring standing so still. However, it's better than being dead. Though it's as well that the world thinks I am. Wilkin! It was Wilkin. embarrassing having to listen to that manager talking about me. Still, he had most of the facts right. You see, Mr. Hewson, the world is divided between collectors and non-collectors. The collectors collect anything, according to taste, from stamps to matchbox labels. I collect throats. Oh, God. It was lucky for me that you came tonight. My collection hasn't been growing much just lately. Mm, I, I don't want to be personal, but your neck is rather skinny. No. I'd never have picked you from choice. I like men with thick necks, thick red necks. Keep away from me. This is a little French razor. The blade is rather narrow. It doesn't cut very deep. Just deep enough. What is it the polite barbers ask? Does the razor suit you, sir? No. No. If you'll be kind enough to raise your chin a little. Thank you. A little more. Just a little more. Thank you, monsieur. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, this is just as you found him. That's right, Inspector. Leaning back, like uh, like he was waiting to be shaved. Well, it'll be interesting to hear what they make of this at the post mortem. There isn't a mark on him. When, um, when we left him, he was facing the other way. He must have turned back towards that figure, Dr. Bourdet, you know, the French throat cutter. Oh, yes. Funny thing, I thought when I was with him, it seemed to have well caught his imagination, that figure. Very fine piece of work, mind you. But when all said and done, well, look, I can lift its head up, see? I mean to say, it's only a waxwork. 